harvest 2020's begun. It's not field corn, it's sweet corn, but nonetheless, it's begun. If anybody wants sweet corn, hit me up in the area because I've got more than I know what to do with. And it is uh, nice sized. Hey everybody, you're watching K K Clark Farms. Clark Farms, that's what you're watching today. Got him. Today's agenda, first and foremost, I need to take out the trash. Need to put some chainsaws back together and clean up this shop because I've had so many projects going lately that stuff's just been getting thrown around here and Things need picked up, so little things like this when drawers get left open, it just annoys me. So, gonna clean the shop up, gonna get this thing cleaned up, and uh, I don't know, might do some mowing, but when I say mowing, I don't necessarily mean with a lawnmower or with a bush hog. I think I might try and cut some hay this week. Um, we don't have any rain in the forecast for like the next two weeks. So might go try and get a second cut of hay because, well, first cut wasn't great and second cut's not going to be great either. The hay is kind of thin, but um, I guess thin hay is better than no hay. Uh, first cut got us just enough that I think we can squeak by through the winter, but if I go out and cut a little bit more um, for second cut, I know that I should be able to uh, make it through the winter pretty comfortably. So probably going to try and do that this week and uh, got some more corn to haul out as well. So that's the agenda. Got hay to cut. Need to change the oil in the combine, change the oil in the 90 horse, haul out another thousand bushel of corn. Truck's going to get inspected today, so that's five things. I got a honeydew list that's a mile long. I get married in less than two weeks, um, so there's that too. And um, yeah, got quite the list of stuff to do, and that was uh, just scratching the scratching the surface of it. Got some of those genuine C and H sections for the bean head. None of them are broke right now. I just wanted to have a box of spares. Some of these are missing. These are the tines that are in the auger that rake the beans in. And this is all that holds them in. Basically, that goes on your head. That goes down. And that little, little dealio there keeps it from uh, flying out. And then a hairpin holds them in down there. So, that's really all there is to those. Um, more pieces for the sections. And then got an end section as well, just in case. Um, no pun intended. So I got the trash taken out and the shop halfway cleaned up. So I'm gonna start unhooking some stuff to hook onto other stuff, if that makes any sense. Gets hooked onto some hay tools, do some greasing, oil some chains, but uh, to pass the time in the shop, I often listen to the Off the Husk podcast. Um, if you haven't checked it out before, I highly recommend it because Zach's a pretty cool guy, along with some of the other people on that uh, podcast. So if you like podcasts, check them out. Here's a chariot. I think I'm gonna bail with this tractor. Use the 100 horse that was hooked to the uh, sprayer all summer. I'm going to use it to cut hay. And I'm going to use that little baby in there to rake hay. So I'll do a quick little tour of what all I'm working with here. Heston 1120. Little hay bind. Does a good job. Cuts good. Cuts it all. Dries it out pretty quick because it is a conditioner. Old Klaus Baylor, it's a Roland 95. It makes like a five by six and a half bale, but it is a soft core bale, so by the time they settle, they're usually about a five by six bale. 
And then an old John Deere 670 rake with a dolly wheel on the front. It serves its purpose as well. None of these hay tools are fancy, but no more cows than what's out here. Really don't need fancy hay tools. They do the job. They put up the hay that we need. So nothing fancy, but it gets it done. Yeah, I'm gonna have to back up a little bit. I think it went. We're close, but not quite. In a bind right now. Heck, if I roll forward, it'll all go in. Well, that's the first one hooked up. Got the PTO, two hydraulic lines. Then I got this little deal here that I need to hook up, which is just the uh, little push button to string a bale. There is no monitor with this baler, so it's all based on that pressure gauge. So there is no go left, go right. You just gotta make a quick windrow and be able to keep it even. It takes, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Kind of an art form to it to make a good bell with this baler, but it can be done. Well, number two's hooked up. Number one's hooked up. I'm gonna give this thing some grease check the chains, check the oil in a couple gearboxes, and uh, should be ready to go, and hopefully cutting in, I don't know, probably hour and a half, maybe, so stay tuned. This is a 540 PTO, and that is a 1000 shaft, so real quickly, I need to get that changed. Now that tractor, and the 90 horse that you may or not be able to see. Anyhow, both of those tractors are 540 or 1000. You change them both the same. There's just a little snap ring. You pull the shaft out. It's got a plunger in there, which activates whether it's uh, 540 or 1000. So that's all you gotta do. So I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers and take that snap ring out real quick. So there's the pair of pliers. Right here's the snap ring, which I just dropped, but you pinch that together and then voila, the shaft pulls, or should pull, right out, like so. So I'm gonna wipe that one off, keep it clean, pop this one back in. Snap ring is back in, and it's ready to hook up PTO. Honestly, that went a lot smoother. It seems like it's a lot easier to go from 1,000 to 540 than it is the other way because of that plunger in there when you're trying to switch it to 1,000, you really gotta put a lot of pressure on it sometimes and that thing will make you cuss. So I'm gonna throw a little air in that back tire on that conditioner, it looks a little low. Yeah, just about ready to cut some hay. Now before you start them big jobs, you always gotta have plenty of lube. That's why I like Schaefer's Roller Chain Lubricant. All right, all unfolded. We'll kick her on and take off. This stuff is pretty thin. It's not real tall at all. It's basically just fescue, grass, a little bit of clover, but most of the clover's dead. So it's not top quality hay, but it's good enough for the cows. It's definitely not hay for the high-end horse people, but uh, the cows enjoy it, so it works for what we're doing. Cutting uh, right about four mile an hour, not too fast, not too fast at all. See the cows over there across the creek, they like to chill out under the trees there. Nice and shady. Pretty big mud hole. The cows have quite the routine. You can usually tell what time of the day it is just based on where they're standing out in the pasture. 
in the mornings they're up by the house, up by the farm, and uh, in the afternoons they migrate down here, and then late in the evening they're usually back up at the house. So they make a full circle once a day, like clockwork. Well, seems there's a bit of a problem. Made a turn and the mower quit. I am pretty sure I just blew a U-joint into about 50 blue billion different pieces. And that I did. That is what you call shot. So, I guess back to the shop we go. Took that bearing out too. Nice. I don't think that anything is wrong with that cross. So, I think I can get by just getting one of these. I hope. We'll see. First of all, I'm gonna clean it up. So yeah, I made four swaths around the outside of this field. And that's all she wrote, so. I guess I'm gonna go hunt down parts and I might be back in action today, but. I don't know, it's already almost three o'clock, so parts might be hard to find today. It looks like the crop reports, the crop tour, uh, Pro Farmer crop tour, and what happened in Iowa is starting to be seen in the markets today. Um, corn's up six, seven cents, but beans, holy crap. Uh, rain inside kind of half ticked off that that PTO shaft blew apart, but I tell you what, if that doesn't make your day, I don't know what will. Now six cents on corn, 16, 17 cents on beans. That doesn't sound like much, but that price jump right now is an extra, every bit of $10,000, um, which granted $10,000 sounds like a lot of money to a lot of people, but in farming, it's not that much, unfortunately. I, but uh, it's about a $10,000 difference in one day, so. I'll take it, but I'm going to try and pull up the parts book for that Heston hay conditioner and see if I can get some part numbers and find a dealer that has those because those Hestons are starting to be a little bit obsolete and it's kind of hard to find parts for them. So I'm going to jump on the computer and try and find a parts book and get those part numbers. All right, well, I got the parts for the hay conditioner ordered, but they're not going to be here until Wednesday. So, got two days of waiting on them. Shouldn't lie for death because we've got about two weeks with no rain in the forecast. So, waiting on that. But in the meantime, pulling this thing out of the way, I'm gonna grab the semi and take it to a mechanics. They're gonna run a yearly inspection through it, go through the brakes and then put the Indiana whatever speed stickers on the uh, semi and on the trailer so it's been inspected and it keeps the DOT happy. So I'm going to grab it and uh, put some air in it. This shed needs to be about four foot wider so I can pull this combine and corn head all the way up there. Because right now that's just kind of wasted space. And I might put that there and then this behind it actually that sounds like a pretty good idea that's what i'll do it'll save me some room but in the meantime this thing's got to go slowly but surely building up some air pressure we're gonna call 80 pounds good enough we're not going far it is a little bit tight getting in here but shed space is limited but we do a pretty good job of keeping everything under a roof very seldom does anything set out except for augers and stuff like that but typically everything is in a shed every night unless we're in the field and far from the farm but even the fields right here by the farm we typically pull stuff back in the shed just to sit overnight keeps it clean keeps the dew off and just 
kind of peace of mind that it's out of the weather. Try not to back into the tractor back there. So that semi is a Volvo VLN something or another. Tipty Super Hopper. It is like, a, I think it's a 38 foot. It's not a real long trailer, which is fine because it keeps me from getting myself in trouble loading them heavy. Cause I like to load trailers really, really full. And with that being a shorter trailer, I typically don't get much over 80,000 pounds if I do at all. So keeps me from getting in too much trouble. So we're gonna pull this thing back in the shed where the semi was setting. Cause the semi is probably gonna be gone a couple days. So that'll work. Got the scale mounted in here now too scale for the grain cart. Man, somebody needs to clean the windows on this thing. They're getting kind of rough. Slow and steady in here. Don't want to run over my battery charger or hit the planter. Don't want to do either of those things. But I believe that we're going to squeeze it in here. Nice and tight. But squeeze it in. Not not a lot of room to spare. I I just can fit through here. And on the other side here, we are pretty dang close over there too. So it just does fit in here. But it's out of the weather. Grain cart needs washed before fall, but really what's the point because in a day in the field it's gonna look dirtier than that, so probably won't wash it before fall, not gonna lie. Before I forget about it, I love that flag, but before I forget about it, I have some parts for the semi that I need to throw throw in with that to get thrown on. If they've got time, I'm gonna have them throw these on. These are just rollers for the hopper bottom door at the bottom something I could do myself but if he wants to do it I'll let him do it if not I'll do it it won't take terribly long I don't know I may just do it myself now that I'm thinking about it but I got them and it's a job that needs done so on the road we go so my inner pyromaniac took over I'm burning some stuff but I got the semi over there and uh He's gonna check out, check it out, go over the brakes, change the fuel filters, oil filters, cause he's got all the stuff already. It's just easier to have him do it. Um, I decided I'm gonna put those rollers on the trailer. No sense paying somebody to do a job I can do myself. But uh, he's a really good mechanic, knows what he's doing. So let him take care of the rest he'll get the inspection and all the certifications that that thing needs done in the meantime i guess i'll wait on parts to come in and change the oil in a couple tractors change it in the combine get the bean head ready to go so that's what i'm going to plan on doing the next rest of the week but this video is kind of all over the place but hopefully it was halfway interesting so if you guys enjoy the video don't forget to subscribe. I think I looked the other day and I've already rolled over 6,000 subscribers. So that was kind of surprising. Um, channel's moving a lot further, a lot faster than I thought it would. So appreciate you guys watching. And until next time, thanks for watching.